Maggie Toulouse Oliver, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. You have been the Bernalillo County Clerk for just about 10 years now. What do you consider your greatest accomplishment? It's, it's hard to narrow it down. I think overall I'm proud that we have really brought Bernalillo County from quite frankly a county that sort of struggled uh, with getting elections right for quite a while to being a county that's looked upon uh, around the country as a model for modernizing elections, improving the election process and expanding access to the ballot. So I think on the whole, I'm really proud of that work. Of course, there are a lot of specific individual things that we've done. Tell us about one of them. Well, for example, we've completely revamped poll worker training. Um, I know that that you know, sounds a little bit simplistic, um, but the way we educate our poll workers, train them, uh, we divide their responsibilities up and make sure that they are uh, aware of the specifics of their particular job on election day. We really drill down to the finer points and make sure that they're very well versed in those responsibilities. That helps them to do a better job on election day and run a better election for all the voters in Bernalillo County. Straight party voting has been an issue here. Nearly half of the people who voted in the 2010 general election chose to just push that one button, it was buttons back then, and, uh, you know, vote uh, for every Democrat or every Republican on the ballot. Now, the last Secretary of State, Diana Durant, she eliminated that option, saying no state law required it. We got a question on this issue from Curtis on Twitter who asked, what is your position on straight party voting? Well, I would restore the straight party option to our statewide ballots if elected Secretary of State. And the reason for that is actually because now that we have a paper ballot system in New Mexico, and we've had one for almost 10 years now, um, it actually really streamlines the voting process for voters. Um, a straight party option doesn't necessarily mean that you're voting for can only the candidates of a particular party, but it does simplify the process if you intend to vote for, say, most of the candidates in one political party. You can pick that straight party option and then go down the ballot and say there's a particular race that you favor a, a candidate of the other party. You can elect to vote for the candidate of that other party. It's not tying you um, to voting only a straight party, but it does speed up the voting process and um, makes it a lot easier uh, for voters to be able to participate. Uh, voter ID. Albuquerque residents have to show ID in the municipal elections, but in statewide elections like this one on November 8th, New Mexicans do not have to show a photo ID. Mm -hmm. Should New Mexico follow Albuquerque's lead and do the same requiring the photo ID? You know, I, I don't think that we should. And I, I, I sort of, I struggle with this because when we look at participation in the city elections in Albuquerque, Frankly, it's not all that robust. The most recent city election, we had 8% voter participation. Um, so I'm not sure that we should model our state election laws off of what a particular city in New Mexico is doing. Are you suggesting that the, the photo ID requirement kept people from the polls? No, but what I am saying is that, uh, you know, the way that we conduct elections at the statewide level here in New Mexico, it seems to be working pretty well. We've made a lot of improvements to the election process. We've modernized it. We're actually making great strides in improving the, integri the integrity and accuracy of our voter registration database. We do have voter ID laws on the books here in New Mexico, and a voter can show a, a physical form of ID if they choose to do that when they come to the polls, or they can give a written or verbal statement of their voter registration information. It's up to the voter. It's the voter's choice, and I really like that. It does seem to be working really well, and again, I just don't think we should be modeling our state laws off of what specific municipalities are doing. But there haven't been very many problems in Albuquerque with photo ID. Uh, I, I don't think we're aware of this being a big problem, so why do we think it would be a problem at the state level? You know, the problem with uh, specific voter ID laws at the state level, especially when you're talking about, you know, physical forms of specific photo voter identification is that when we look around the country at different states that have enacted these kind of laws, a couple of things are happening. First and foremost, we're seeing uh, places where anywhere between 10 to 12 percent of the population doesn't have the specific kind of ID that they need 
in order to vote. And worse, um, if you look at an example like Wisconsin, where the state is actually required to provide the ID to voters, they're falling down on the job. And voters are not getting the IDs that they need so that they can engage in their constitutional right to vote. We're seeing these laws struck down across the country. Just in the last year, we've seen four or five of these laws struck down by high courts around the nation. This is expensive and costly litigation for states. We're in a budget crisis here in New Mexico. We don't have money to be engaging in really expensive litigation to solve what problem? There's really not a whole lot of data showing that we have a lot of problem with the current system. So I think it's really important for us to stay the course with an open system that ensures that every eligible citizen has the right to vote. Annie on Twitter wants to know, what do you think about New Mexico adopting same-day voter registration? Well, I've been a supporter of same-day voter registration in the past. Um, in the states that have same-day voter registration, we tend to see higher voter participation rates. Um, one of the things that I'm interested in as Secretary of State is helping to increase our voter participation rates. I think that in order to have a healthy democracy, a democracy that looks like the voters of the state, we need to have robust participation. Um, and we can do it in a way uh, that's technologically feasible. I would like to see a system where sort of in the same way you cast a provisional ballot now, you could register on election day and cast that ballot and we would verify it on the back end, make sure it's an appropriate voter registration and count it at that point. About that verification, your opponent, Nora Espinoza, has said that same-day registration means that someone driving across the country on Election Day could stop in Tucumcari, stop in Albuquerque, stop in Gallup, register right there and vote. How can you reassure us that people are not going to do that, that that's, those votes are not going to happen or they're not going to count? Well, first and foremost, anybody who tries to vote more than once in the state of New Mexico is committing a fourth degree felony. So obviously we need to have a zero tolerance policy when it comes to prosecuting any type of violation of the election code. But the type of system that I'm proposing would be a back end verification system. It would be a system where you uh, complete the voter registration and the, the ballot is cast, but then it's verified on the back end of the system to make sure that the situation you're describing doesn't happen. And what's that verification look like? Well, what it would look like is basically going into the system after the election and checking to make sure that the same person didn't register in some other county and try to cast a ballot. Campaign finance is one of the many things that the Secretary of State's office oversees. Candidates fill out forms. You've been doing these saying how much uh, you've uh, got from donors and what you've spent it on. But in the past, uh, this has essentially been an honor system. Right. The forms are filled out, um, but nobody at the Secretary of State's office actually checks to see if they're correct. Would you audit these campaign finance reports for accuracy? Absolutely. In fact, state law requires a mandatory 10% random audit of campaign finance reports. But to your point, you know, we don't know whether those audits have actually ever taken place in the past to the extent that they have. Who's performing these audits? Are they professional auditors or are they members of the Secretary of State's staff? Are they being published in any way so that we as citizens and voters can understand um, exactly who is compliant with our state law and who isn't? So I'm very interested in making sure that we fully implement the audit law that's currently on the books. Uh, I've been in talks with our state auditor to maybe form a partnership uh, with that office in terms of conducting the audits. I also believe that every single election, the Secretary of State's uh, campaign finance reports ought to be audited. The person who's in charge of overseeing this process should always have their reports audited just so there's never a question uh, about whether or not uh, that report was, was chosen randomly or not. Secretaries of State in the past have told us that there just isn't enough money, there aren't enough resources, there aren't enough people there. Is that an issue that would be a priority for you in asking for more money for the office or moving money around? Well, I personally believe that elections and election offices are chronically underfunded, not just here in the state of New Mexico, but around the country. Um, democracy and the, the workings of our elections is something that we as Americans care deeply and passionately about, but we don't seem to see that passion and that priority reflected in these offices' budgets. So yes, of course, I'm going to full-throatedly advocate for as many resources for the office as possible in order to run fair elections, accessible elections, to make 
sure that these other components of the office, especially the ethics uh, enforcement aspect of the office, are being adhered to. But we are in a budget crisis in New Mexico. So it's going to be really important to do as much as we can to streamline these processes, to utilize technology and tools in order to <clears throat> be able to do some of these things, but at uh, a lower cost. And we also have to prioritize. Budgets are a reflection of our priorities. My office is going to prioritize integrity of elections, ethics, and holding elected officials accountable at all levels of government. Is there an example of something you would like to change about the way things are done there that isn't going to require a lot of money? Something um, specific that you want to do, but that you're not going to have to ask for more money for? Well, again, uh, there are a lot of things that we can do to continue to modernize and streamline both the election process and the business services side of the office. It's not something we get to talk about much. The fact that the Corporations Bureau is now under the auspices of the Secretary of State's office. We, as the voters, uh, passed a constitutional amendment in 2012 to move that division out of the PRC and into the Secretary of State's office like it is in so many states. I would like to see a, a fully electronic business registry system. Currently we have a manual process uh, that requires a, a lot of staff time and it, and it requires business owners and potential business owners to go through a jump through a lot of hoops and red tape, you know, physically driving paperwork or mailing it up to Santa Fe. Um, similar to what we've done with land records in our county offices around the state, developing an electronic filing system, it saves time, it saves money, and it cuts a lot of that bureaucratic red tape that's getting in the way of starting much needed new businesses in our state. Open primaries. We had a lot of conversation about this this year. Right now, independent voters are unable to cast ballots in primary elections. Only people who have registered as Democrats or registered as Republicans get to vote in those respective primaries. But more people, more young people especially, are declining to choose a party when they register. So should we open these primaries to people who are not registered with those parties? I personally believe that we should, um, again, my values are for a more participatory system, a, a system which is open and uh, inviting to people to come and cast a ballot and make their voice heard. And I have run now five primary elections here in Bernalillo County, and in every single election since I've been county clerk, we've had individuals come to the polls on election day and be told that they are not going to be able to cast a regular ballot because they aren't registered uh, within a particular political party. And whatever the reason that may be the case, whether it's because the voter has you know, consciously chosen not to elect a party or because of even sometimes a clerical error and uh, that's not reflected in their voter registration, it really uh, hurts me to be, have to turn voters away from the ballot box, especially when they're there, they want to have a say in who they're nominating to be on the ballot in, in the fall. So I would love to see an open primary system here and I would support that. Last month, there was an increase in voter registration that was connected to postcards that were sent out by the Secretary of State to about 460,000 New Mexicans who appeared to be eligible to vote but were not registered. Your opponent, Nora Espinoza, criticized those mailers. Local media reported that she raised concerns that people may have registered who are not, in fact, eligible to vote, for example, non-citizens. She also said that current voter rolls need to be cleaned up before we do something like that. Do you share those concerns? Well, actually, this is a part of a, a bigger process that the state has recently entered into called the Electronic Registration Information Center. Uh, we're joining 19 other states and the District of Columbia in a data sharing program uh, around the country. And what this is going to do is it's going to actually give us a lot of tools and information so that we can increase the integrity and accuracy of our voter file here in New Mexico. The first step in the process here in New Mexico as an every other state that's joined Eric, is to send out this mailing, uh, inviting potentially unregistered voters to register through the state's uh, online voter registration portal, which is um, actually, uh, the data is shared with the Motor Vehicle Division. So in order to become a registered voter through the system, you actually have to verify your social security number and your driver's license number, and you also have to verify that you're 18 years of age and a citizen of the United States uh, in order to get through the process and become a registered voter. So I think this is a great program. We're seeing lots 
lots of, of new voters coming into the fold as a result of this. And the even better thing about it is down the road, our data is going to be so much cleaner because we're going to know when voters are moving out of the state or even within the state so we can update uh, their voter registration information. We'll even be able to match our voter registration data against the Social Security Master Death File, which is uh, information we've never had access to before. So when voters become deceased, we'll have much better information about that and we'll be able to keep our voter database uh, much more accurate and up to date. We have just one last question and briefly, uh, Patty from Facebook wants to know, do you support mail-in ballots? I, I certainly would like to look into that in the future for New Mexico. Um, one of the concerns I've had with mail-in voting in the past is the exact topic that we just discussed. Um, I've been concerned because we do have a very transient state. People are moving a lot. Uh, people are living in new addresses and, and their old address is still in the voter file. So with these new tools and technology that we're developing, especially becoming a part of the Electronic Registration Information Center, uh, we are going to have a much cleaner, much more accurate up-to-date voter file and I would potentially like to move New Mexico in that direction. It could also potentially save us a lot of money in election administration down the road. Maggie Toulouse Oliver, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. That was Maggie Toulouse Oliver, the Democratic candidate in the race for Secretary of State this year. Her opponent, Republican Nora Espinosa, declined multiple requests from New Mexico in focus to appear with Ms. Toulouse Oliver or on a one-on-one -on -one interview. We will air the full debate between Maggie Toulouse-Oliver and Nora Espinoza at Congre Congregation Albert on Thursday, November 3rd.